everyone, and welcome once again to the Word of the Day podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Silva, and let's get right into it. We'll feature two words once again in this episode for two reasons. First, I'm not going to drag out an explanation for a word past like 90 seconds if it only takes that long to say everything interesting about it. Just like how it's okay to tell an uninteresting story as long as it's short, like I went to the mall and it was hard to find parking, like as long as you end it right there and and you don't talk about how many times you circled the parking lot, plus that one time that mean lady cut you off right when you were about to pull into a spot, how hungry you were, no, none of that. Um, Boring and short is acceptable, Uh, boring and long is not. And the second reason is that it would be kind of weird if the theme music occupied like 30% of the entire episode. So uh, when these situations arise, I'll often do multiple words. The first one today is comestibles. This definition couldn't be simpler. Comestibles, is just, that's just food. It's things you eat. So think you know, like uh, edibles or, or foodstuffs, both of which are actual words and, and fun ones to boot. I suppose it's possible you, you might not have known that the adjective edible also has the noun form, edibles, or that foodstuffs means stuff related to food. Just like breadstuffs means uh, stuff related to bread, and of course, uh, fun stuffs, uh, which sadly is actually not a word, but it would be uh, stuff that's related to fun things. Anyway, so the online definition of comestibles is an item of food. All right, so they went with the singular, and yes, technically you could say comestible, but no one does, so I would stick with the plural here. Uh, Foods are generally seen in groups, uh, food groups, if you will. It's important to note that comestibles is not to be confused with a totally different word, combustibles, which are things that are liable to burst into flame. Depending on who's doing the cooking, the comestibles may seem combustible, um, but be careful with your usage just to make sure you're, you're not giving the wrong impression. Let's do a couple examples. Example number one. Wow, these caterers have crafted some super esoteric comestibles. Have you tried the red velvet pineapple fondue yet? Example number two. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard and found it completely devoid of comestibles. Alrighty, it's time to hit the second word for today, and that is idyllic, which means, quote, extremely happy, peaceful, or picturesque, end quote. Now, sadly, I don't get to offer my own definition here in addition to the official one because I thought it meant something else. I thought it meant uh, just perfect in in every way. Um, But no, I was just getting it mixed up, I think, with ideal, And it is quite possible, and indeed likely in many cases, that something could be ideal, but very far from idyllic, very far from peaceful. So the ideal metal concert, if you like that sort of thing, is not going to be idyllic at all. Now, I first heard about this word because I used to play the card game Authors a lot, uh, which featured, uh, as one of the literary works on one of the cards, Idols of the King by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Uh, So the poetry form of idol is... Uh, a short description in verse or prose of a picturesque scene or incident, especially in rustic life, end quote. Um, but unless you're a poet, you, you probably don't need to know about this version. Idyllic, uh, the adjective version that comes from this original uh, noun form referring to poetry, uh, is the more relevant one for everyday usage. Now, I can hear you all, you know, shouting at your iPhones or other listening devices. You know, what are these idols of the king? What did Tennyson write? You know, we love poetry. Please read us some of the poetry. Well, if you insist. Oddly, although the poetry definition of idol says it's a short description in verse, uh, this poem, The Idols of the King, is very long because the king in question is King Arthur. And Tennyson basically tells his entire life story. Um, So I'll only read you like 0.4% of it. Uh, But I have linked the entire poem in today's show notes uh, in case you want to spend an afternoon perusing it. Quote, and by the way, this quote is specifically selected to be from an idyllic section, a happy and peaceful and picturesque section. Here we go. Thither came Geraint, and underneath beheld the long street of a little town in a long valley, on one side whereof, white from the mason's hand, a fortress rose, and on one side a castle in decay, Beyond a bridge that spanned a dry ravine, and out of town and valley came a noise, as of a broad brook or a shingly bed, brawling or like a clamor of the rooks at distance, ere they settle for the night. And well, that, that sure does sound nice, sounds bucolic, sounds very rural. Um, anyway, a Geraint, after a couple thousand more lines that I scanned very quickly, uh, apparently battles some evildoer and wins, but not before getting, and I quote, 
spleenful about something, which just means that he was feeling angry and spiteful. Uh, spleen, as you might know, is an, an organ uh, in the body. And in olden times, uh, it was thought to be the source of bad moods and just general mean-spiritedness. Hence, spleenful. There are really a, a lot of great words in these idols of the king. Anyway, here are a couple examples of the main meaning we're talking about here, which again is not the, the noun uh, idol, but the adjective idyllic. Example number one. My weekend was so idyllic, thank you for asking, said Eddie to his co-workers. I lay in a hammock, continuously rocked back and forth by the gentle breezes, and I read my favorite book and I sipped margaritas for hours on end. How about you? Example number two. William looked out upon the idyllic farm scene before him, which was marred only by the sight of several cows escaping through the fence. Well, that is it for today's show. Uh, I can't think of a way to work either of these words into a reminder to rate and review the show on iTunes, uh, so I'll just encourage you to do that uh, without any other pretext. And don't forget, you can always write us. Uh, You can send in a word, tell us how you've used a word, tell us about your idyllic weekend or the great comestibles you cook. All those things uh, you can send to me at wotdpodcast at gmail.com. I'm Jamie Silva, and thank you for tuning in.